In the News Nation political panel this morning, Los Angeles Times political reporter Curtis Lee and Republican strategist Matt Schlapp, who served as White House political director for President George W. Bush. Gentlemen, thanks for joining. I want to pick up on what happened in Virginia. Obviously, um, two of the candidates already speaking out, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. But I want to play what Allison Parker's father said on Fox News uh, regarding his now his fight actually on NBC where he discusses uh, now his fight to change legislation. Let's play it. My grief, which is still apparent and, and will be that way for a while, it, it, it's turned to anger because, you know, how many times are we going to see a, an incident like this happen? You know, Newtown, Charleston, you know, the movie theaters, you name it. You, it's, it's got to stop uh, nationally, locally. We've got to, to find a way to keep crazy people from getting guns, mentally unstable people. I mean, look at it. The, the, the people that do this are mentally unstable, and somehow they're able to get guns. And the NRA is, is fighting it tooth and nail. And I, my, my goal is to, to call these people out. I'm doing now, and I'm going to do it on national television every chance I get. And that was her, um, Allison's father just a short time ago with NBC. Hillary Clinton obviously saying very similar things that we heard from President Obama, that uh, she wants to take on uh, the gun violence issue, make a change in America. Donald Trump speaking on CNN said it's, a, it, it's not a gun problem. It is a mental problem problem here. Curtis, um, here we are again, presidential election, and we are yeah. having the gun debate, but not everyone is commenting on both sides, quite honestly. Yeah, no, it's something that, that certainly comes up after a, a number of uh, high-profile shootings. We saw that in 2012 after the Aurora Theater shooting, as well as after Newtown. I mean, there was a big push by the Obama administration to uh, to have Congress act and, and call for, for universal gun background checks. Uh, those efforts stalled in Congress, and it, and it really fell to the states. And you saw after those shootings, you saw Connecticut, Colorado pass uh, stricter gun reforms. But, but on the national level, I mean, it, it really has stalled, and, and it's always something, it's an issue that comes up after these high-profile shootings. And Matt, we have another uh, GOP debate just around the corner in a couple of weeks here. Will we see this? Um, will we see any deviation from what we've heard from GOP candidates in the past regarding this? You know, you know uh, that, Tamron, I don't see us making a big, I don't see any of these candidates uh, deviating from their support of the Second Amendment. But I think there's something very important here that there will be a distinction on. When I served in the White House and worked with groups like the, the NRA and other pro-Second Amendment groups, they were always willing to allow background checks on someone's mental health to be a part of this whole background check question. It's the courts and a lot of civil liberties groups that prevent that from happening. A lot of judges have ruled that you can't take somebody's mental health background into account when it comes to the purchase of a gun. So pro-Second Amendment folks, pro-NRA folks are not going to disagree with this idea that people, to quote the father who are quote-unquote crazy, um, should, should have these weapons. Um, of that. The problem is the courts don't uphold it. So we're, we have a real problem in this country. And I respect the father of this, in this of the victim in this horrible crime um, for trying to do something to change these laws because it's upsetting to all of us. And we've seen victims' families from Newtown to Aurora where James Holmes was just sentenced to life. We are hearing this over and over from people who know personally the pain, but there's right. been no action from those um, in Washington. Let me transition to Joe Biden. We just played his comment, really grappling on what to do uh, with his political future. Uh, many people calling on him to jump into the race. Uh, guys, let me play what Hillary Clinton said on Joe Biden's possible run. Let's play that. I have uh, a great deal of admiration and affection for him. And I think he has to make what is a very difficult decision for himself and his family. And he should have the space and the opportunity to decide what he wants to do. Measured words from Hillary Clinton, Curtis, but what do you know is happening behind the scenes with her team? Well, this is obviously a, a big decision for the vice president, and he wants to take his time in making it. I mean, his, his son just passed away in May, and um, we, we're going to see the first debate coming up for the Democrats in, uh, in mid-October, and he has this window uh, to decide, and I, I think that obviously the vice president wants to make sure his family is fully on board with this before he, he moves forward, um, and, and, and we're, seeing, uh, we're seeing, seeing him take his time in making a decision, and I don't know if that decision is going to be immediately. I mean, he said by the 
the end of the summer. Um, so it's all kind of just really wait and see right now. You know, it's interesting, Matt, a Quinnipiac poll um, showing this morning Donald Trump's 16 point lead now over Ben Carson with Jeb Bush, Senator Ted Cruz, Senator Marco Rubio tied for third. So much is made over what Hillary Clinton and her team thinks of a possible run from Joe Biden. What about the GOP? Might he be the candidate they fear the most in that what seems popular right now with the Republicans is this, you know, say it as you believe it is attitude, which certainly we know that Joe Biden provides that authenticity. Yeah, I have to say Republicans love the idea of a Joe Biden candidacy because talk about unscripted and quotable. It will definitely be that. Not more uh, than Donald Trump, I bet they'd say. <laughs> well, in a, di in, a diff in a different way, but uh, <laughs> that would sure be an interesting uh, matchup. But, yeah. but the, I think most Republicans actually, Tamron, believe that Hillary Clinton has been has demonstrated such a weak campaign structure and she herself has been such a weak candidate. I think a lot of them are thinking she's the candidate besides Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. who's an avowed socialist. She's the candidate they <laughs> want to run against. Joe Biden gives Democrats a chance to reset this whole conversation. He could be a lot stronger and he could be a lot more formidable. All right, Matt, thank you very much Curtis. Great pleasure having you on as well. Thank we'll you. talk a bit more about politics so stick around.